How's it going everyone? It's Harvey from Weather Spawn 5000 and today we're going to forecast a 2022 hurricane season. Wait, will this hurricane season be more active than usual? Will it be less active than usual? I'll answer those questions in this video by taking a look at several different factors that will determine the hurricane season such as sea surf temperatures in the Nino 3.4 region as well as other factors such as the wind shear forecast, the long term wind shear forecast and the sea surf temperatures in the Atlantic. But before I begin, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather related calls. Make sure to like if you like this video and make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather related calls. So let's begin by taking a look at the current sea surf temperatures in the Nino 3.4 region, more specifically the area synonymous with forecasting what type of Nino pattern we're bound to experience within the next several months. And you see that pretty much for the duration of the past year, we primarily been in a La Nina. There was a small period where we sort of rebounded back into the neutral phase between the months of May 2021 and I'd say till around September. But for the most part, you see that sea surf temperatures in the Nino 3.4 region have been cooler than average and only have gotten um, has gotten more cooler than average over the past um, more recent months. So right now we're experiencing a La Nina and that's expected to continue over the next several months and that will make a big difference when it comes to the amount of tropical cyclones we're about to experience within um, um, going into this um, summer. But if we were to take a look at the forecast for the next several months, you see that the La Nina, while it is expected, to re um, while the most likely scenario is that we're going to be experiencing a La Nina pattern for the first few months of spring, that should eventually change head into the hurricane season where you see that a uh, chance of a La Nina and a neutral phase are pretty much equal, but this is a little bit of a um, uh, stark contrast from the previous Enzo outlook, which was last, um, which before this one was last made in February, where before a neutral phase was more likely. But now it seems like a La Nina is almost just as likely as it seems like the National Weather Service has detected that the sea surf temperatures um, will remain cooler than average for a little bit longer. So that could make a big difference in terms of what you should expect this hurricane season if a La Nina were to continue into this summer, which at this point, it's around a 50-50 shot of experiencing either a La Nina or a neutral phase this hurricane season. So to show you guys what happens typically during a La Nina, you see that typically um, during a La Nina phase, of course, the sea surf temperatures just off the equatorial eastern Pacific are co much cooler than average, where as a result, there's a a lot less lift in the atmosphere in this region and there's a lot more sinking air as a result and stable air all throughout the eastern pacific where you see that the there's stronger vertical wind shear as a result of how much lift that's going on in the atlantic as a result of how cool how much cooler than average sea surf temperatures are along the eastern pacific and as a result of the, the amount of sinking air that's going on in this region it promotes more lift in, right around the Atlantic because of course when there's a strong amount of sinking air in one region there has to be a area of rising air and very buoyant air in another region and typically that occurs right around the Atlantic where its sea surf temperatures are typically warmer than average and also um, that there's a lot less sinking air as a result of the cooler and average sea surf temperatures where the air molecules in the aloft in the atmosphere has an area to sink down which is the eastern pacific so as a result we typically see less vertical wind shear during a la nina and more and less atmospheric stability as a result of a la nina so based on this fact we're more likely to experience a more active than usual hurricane season but there's still other factors we need to take a look at because because of course there's still a chance that we would experience um that we could experience a neutral phase but typically based on what i noticed is that a neutral phase and the la nina phase tend to be fairly similar we have seen hyperactive um years where primarily the 
um, C receptors right around Nino 3.4 region were more in line with the neutral phase than the La Nina phase. So it's certainly possible that even with the neutral phase, you're more we're more likely to experience a more active than usual hurricane sen- season in the Atlantic. But we need to take a look at other factors such as the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation, which is a pretty much a pattern that happen that changes every few decades where Typically, during a positive Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation, we see more. Uh, we we typically see more active than usual hurricane seasons. While during a negative Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation, we see less um, active hurricane seasons overall. So, if I were to show you guys the observed observed um, Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation over the past pretty much 100 plus years you see that ever since the turn of the century we have we pretty much been experiencing a positive atlantic multi-decadal oscillation and it's the reason why typically every hurricane season it's uh, it seems like we're forecasting a more active than usual hurricane season and that's because we compare it to the long-term average um, of with that contains over 100 years of data and as a result it includes the years where the negative atlantic multi-decadal oscillation are um is noticeable and um it seems like every year it seems um the hurricane season is more active so of course um not many people lived um um for the past hundred years to really um observe to really feel like this a uh, hurricane season over the past 20 years has been more active because that's typically been the norm over the past 20 years however um it is good to point out that we're more likely to experience a more active than usual hurricane season as a result of a positive atlantic multi-decadal oscillation um to, um will occur um for this hurricane season based on this index while the while it certainly has been lowering the positive phase of the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation, you see that we're still well in the positive. So as a result, we should expect a more active than usual hurricane season, at least compared to long-term average. In terms, um, compared to a short-term average between pretty much the late 90s up until now, it may be a little bit more difficult to forecast whether this Atlantic hurricane season will be more active relative to what you typically experience during a positive Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation. Isolation, but we're going to take a look at several different factors that will definitely determine um, if we will experience more act- inactive than usual hurricane season. And what typically uh, Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation does, a positive one, is that we typically see much warmer than average sea surface temperatures, which as a result does promote more tropical cyclone activity compared to a negative Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation oscillation where we typically see cooler than average sea surface temperatures and this is a pattern that lasts for several decades so this is a long-term pattern that is expected to continue over the next several years so we should expect a more active than usual hurricane season as a result of a positive multi-decadal um, oscillation but compared to a short-term average we need to take a look at different factors to determine if this will be more active relative to what you typically experience during um, a positive multi-decadal oscillation because of course not everyone lived before the 1990s or really experienced how a below average hurricane season um, during a negative Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation um, is so we're going to take a look at several different factors to determine if we will experience a um, um, more active than usual hurricane season. So now I want to show you guys the Nino 3.4 region sea surface temperatures anomaly over the past pretty much 70 years. And the reason why I show you this is because based on this index, we could take a look at years that are very similar to what is forecasted to happen um, for 2022. And and based on our forecasts, based on those years that were very similar and the two years that really um that really catch my eye when it comes to similarities to the what's expected for 2022 hurricane season is the years of 2001 and the hurricane season of 2012 because of course over the past i'd say um two years we've been in a la nina phase for the most part and the two other years that 
Um, and this year, we're more expected to be in line closer to a neutral phase. And if we were to take a look at what happened, typically um, what happened during the 2001 and 2012 hurricane season, you see that before the 2012 hurricane season, we had multiple consecutive months where we were in a La Nina phase in the Nino 3.4 region before it rebounded back into the neutral phase during uh, during the 2012 hurricane season, which is certainly in the realm possibilities for the year 2022. And same goes for 2001, where you see that um, between the months of July and October, you see that we um, to the 2001 hurricane season primarily was experiencing a neutral phase, which is very similar to what's forecast for a 2022 hurricane season. And I could point out years before 2001 that look very similar to the 2022 hurricane season. But the thing is, is that with the years prior to 2001, you got um for the years prior to 2001 um you guys um the those years were experiencing a negative multi decadal atlantic multi decadal oscillation which means that it doesn't really give a good representation of what to expect because it, this year we're going to experience some positive atlantic multi decadal oscillation and the years before 2001 didn't necessarily experience that so it'll be more difficult to really correlate those years similar to the 2022 hurricane season when a major pattern like the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation are completely different between the years prior to 2000 and this year. So that's why I'm only going to point out the year, um, the hurricane seasons of 2001 and 2012 in this video. But so um, and based on what happened during the 2001 and 2012 hurricane seasons, the 2001 hurricane season experienced 17 named storms, which even if you compare it to the relative average during a positive Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation, it's still above average. And if we were to take a look at 2012 hurricane season, of course, we have um, experienced um, Hurricane Isaac, which pounded New Orleans as a Category 1 hurricane that year. And of course, a big one, Hurricane Sandy, one of the worst tropical cyclones in history. Um, that, um, that year, we experienced 19 named storms. So Typically, during years similar to 2022, we experienced a more active than usual hurricane season, um, even comparing it to the short-term average. So I, so I say it's um, best to, um, it's best to predict that the 2022 hurricane season will be more active than usual, based on the fact that we're more likely to experience sort of a neutral to La Nina phase, which has. Um, which has previously in the past brought much more um, much more active than usual hurricane seasons. And uh, there are other factors I want to point out as well, where if we were to take a look at the wind shear anomalies between the, um, the three-month average between July, August, and September, three of the most active months of the hurricane season, you see that the wind shear in the upper levels of the atmosphere where the air pressure is at 200 millibars, you see that it's very... Um, there's a lack of wind shear in general throughout the main Devon region and more specifically the Caribbean. So as a result of this weaker than usual wind shear that's expected from the CFS model, I think it's best to bet that we're going to experience definitely going to experience a more active than usual hurricane season. And if we were to take a look at other factors such as the forecasted sea surf temperature anomaly um, for, um, for the three month average between July and August, you see that the the um, the areas where the sea surface temperatures will be much um, well above average will be in the east, the western Atlantic, where you see the Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean, and uh, just off the northeast coast, you guys are experiencing sea surface temperatures well above average. And even if we were to take a look at the main Devon region, the sea surface temperatures are expected to be warmer than average, not to an extent to where it's much warmer than average, say, compared to the Gulf of Mexico and the Western Atlantic in general, but 
you guys are still expected to experience um, warmer than average seas temperatures. So as a result, the entire Atlantic should experience a lot more lift in the atmosphere for a more conducive environment for a tropical cyclone formation to occur. So that's only something we're going to need to consider when making this forecast for the hurricane season. And if we were to take a look at other factors such as the height anomaly um, over the three month average this is important because it really determines where the ridge will be located and you see that we're expected to receive a, a quite a dominant ridge and you see that there isn't much of a weakness headed um in ridging further northward so as a result I, sh I would expect more tropical cyclones ahead f further southward than northward this hurricane season. So the Gulf Coast states could get more involved and the Caribbean, of course, could get more involved. So that's something, something to keep in mind when making this forecast for the hurricane season. That sea strip temperatures are expected to be warmer than average. And of course, wind shear is expected to be weaker than average. So that's only something to consider. Now, taking a look at the sea strip temperatures as of right now, you see that much of the western Atlantic is experiencing warmer than average sea strip temperatures. However, interestingly enough, the main development region is experiencing cooler than average sea surf temperatures. And based on what the CFS model is forecasting at this point, I think that more tropical cyclones will form than what you typically experience along the Western Atlantic, including the Gulf of Mexico, because this is where most of the lift in the atmosphere should occur with warmer than average sea surf temperatures, which of course um, transfers that energy into the air molecules, which allows for more lift in the atmosphere to occur as a result of warmer than average sea surf temperatures along the Western Atlantic, while in the area where the Sea surf temperatures in the main development region where sea surf temperatures are expected to rebound above average, but not to the extent there could be a little bit more sinking air in the main development region than what you typically experience. But overall, I still do expect a more active than usual hurricane season, not only for the Atlantic in general, but for the main development region, because I do expect sea surf temperatures to warm up headed into this summer. Now, taking a look at um, my forecast compared to the short term average and the reason why I did this was of course to compare it more towards what you typically experience during a positive Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation because of course not many um, there are a large portion of people who haven't lived or experienced years before let's say 1995 to really get a good idea of how the long term, um, how uh, uh, weaker than usual hurricane season is. So I decided to use the more modern, um, the short term average. And you see that even despite the, um, and despite the short term average being more active than the long term average, I still do expect a more active than usual hurricane season as a result of warmer than average sea surface temperatures, weaker than average wind shear, a uh, La Nina or neutral phase expected to develop. And comparing this year to years similar to this one, it seems like a more active than usual hurricane season typically happens during years that are very similar to this year or analog years, I should call them. So I'm expecting 19 named storms, 10 hurricanes, and five major major hurricanes for this hurricane season so that's something something to keep in mind um that this will be a more active than usual hurricane season most likely but keep in mind whether this hurricane season is more active than usual less active than usual or around average keep in mind that all it takes is one storm to completely devastate a community so do not underestimate uh, um, a hurricane season just because it may be less active than you initially anticipated now taking a look at where i expect the most tropical cyclone formation i expect it to be more in the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean this year. And this as a result of the warmer than average heat surf temperatures. And of course, there's strong ridging to the north. So I do expect a lot of tropical cyclones to take a further southward track this year. I still expect above average cyclone formation in the main Devon region because I do expect sea surf temperatures to rebound. Um, so that's something, something to keep in mind that I expect a um, more um a more act definitely a more active than usual tropical um hurricane season for the gulf of mexico and the caribbean especially where sea strip temperatures are much warmer than average but yeah guys i guess that's it for this video i think you guys watching make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather calls make sure to like if you like this video and make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather calls and i hope you guys all have a great day